My grandmother kept her breast in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't really breasts. They were chicken cutlets. Yeah, like those beige, fleshy, squishy, plasticky things. Yeah, my grandmother kept them in a drawer because my grandmother was battling breast cancer. And like one in eight women that are sitting in this room, she was a breast cancer survivor. But my grandmother was so much more than a breast cancer survivor. My grandmother was the best grandmother. And I know everyone says that their grandmother was like the best grandmother, but my grandmother was really the best grandmother. She would do all kinds of grandmothery things like make a big dinner and have us all hold hands around a table and say our grace before we ate. Yeah, that kind of grandmother. Or the kind of grandmother who would sit on a porch and know all the neighbors' names as they walk by and would wave to them. That kind of grandmother. And she was really the kind of person who, if you were having a bad day, you could lay your head on her lap and she would make you feel better. That kind of grandmother. And she was always very beautifully dressed, or how she would say it, sharp, right? And because she was a survivor, she would wrap her hair on special occasions and wear beautifully bright colored caftans. She was just a vision to behold. She was such a beautiful person. And my grandmother would take me with her when she would go out, and I will never forget this one day. My grandmother and I went to go buy her bras after breast cancer. And we drove out, I'm talking like way out, like La Plata, Southern Maryland, <laughs> out. And we pulled up to a medical supply store, which was a little surprising to me, but you know, I was about nine years old, I didn't think much of it. And we walked into this space, and immediately I'm hit by the smell of Bengay. Yeah, so we walk past aisles of bedpans and laxatives and adult diapers, and we get to the back of the store where we meet the bra fitter, who's not very nice. Yeah, she's pleasant, but she doesn't really seem like she wants to be there. And there's a curtain with a rod in the back, and that is where my grandmother, this beautiful breast cancer survivor, is supposed to go and be fit for her bra. So she opens the curtain and in my grandmother steps and she's measured for a bra with this fitter who almost acts like she doesn't want to touch her, maybe even as if cancer was contagious. And that bright, beautiful grandmother that I had shrunk and she wasn't that same person anymore. Her eyes dropped to the floor. And I will always remember that moment and thinking, that's not my grandmother. Fast forward a few years later, I'm in college and I'm about 19 and I'm eating ramen noodles out of my coffee maker. <laughs> and I'm reading fashion blogs in my dorm room and I come across this article and it says that Victoria's Secret was petitioned by 150,000 people to acknowledge breast cancer and to carry mastectomy bras. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Now women like my grandmother can shop with dignity in a regular store, like the way me and my mom and my sister get to shop. And Victoria's Secret responded that they politely decline because they didn't feel like they could do the service justice. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, someone needs to do something about this. There's 150,000 people that signed this petition we need to stop begging corporations and just do it ourselves. I'm like, someone will do it, right? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> a few weeks later, I'm in that same dorm room when I get a call from my father and I learn that my grandmother's breast cancer had returned and that she passed away. It was in that exact same space. Fast forward a few years later, I was crowned Miss District of Columbia, and yeah, thank you. <laughs> but breast cancer had never really left my life. 
My makeup artist, a gem of a person, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she had the distinct honor of being able to speak at the Susan G. Komen 5K. And she invited me to come out in my crown and sash for a celebrity appearance. And of course, I was happy to, uh, to appear. And as I'm walking up, I'm greeted by this very sweet woman. And she introduces herself as Dr. Regina Hampton. And because I have my crown and my sash on, I'm not really going to run this 5K. I'm going to like walk. <laughs> and take pictures casually, I'm not gonna run. Um, and neither was Dr. Hampton. So we're walking and we're talking in this 5K and I tell her the story of my grandmother and she tells me that her patients were still driving out way past La Plata in Southern Maryland to buy post mastectomy bras and breast forms after she performed their surgery. And we both agreed that someone should do something about that. So as we're walking and we're talking, we're sharing these ideas about what we would do if we were ever to have this store. And as we separate, I tell her, well, it was great to meet you. Good luck on that store you're gonna start. That sounds like a lot of work. And we agree to exchange phone numbers, and after a few dinners and a few glasses of champagne, we decide we're gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we did it. And we opened the doors of Cherry Blossom Intimates, a first of its kind, fully accredited medical facility that's housed within a lingerie store. It's actually open like in Prince George's County right now. Um, we're open seven days a week. And it's a place where breast cancer survivors can shop alongside their best friends for their post mastectomy bras and prosthetics. And the best part is that we accept most major health insurance plans so women don't have to pay out of pocket. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Um, it gets even better because using 3D printing, we can actually create a custom breast prosthetic that looks and feels like the breast a survivor had before her cancer diagnosis. Yeah, they come in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they come in 36 different skin tones, and our patients can actually add custom veins and freckles and customize their nipples. It's this whole fun thing. It's, it's really amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's what we've created, and we house it, though, where women can shop if they have not had breast cancer, and we have bras in over 200 sizes. So we opened the doors of this store in October of 2018, and on opening day, I hung a picture of my grandmother on the mantel, sort of a symbolic of this angel watching over us and over this space. And then I think, like, I did it. My life is complete. Well, <laughs> thank you. A few weeks later, in walks a woman with her granddaughter, and she asks if she's in the right place. And I tell her, absolutely. And she pulls me to the side and she tells me that she's had breast cancer, but she doesn't want her granddaughter to know. So I say, no problem, this is my moment. I spring into action and I whisk her away behind our eight foot tall, living, breathing, hot pink moss wall and into our fitting rooms and I close a pink door behind us. I sit her down in a big velvet chair and I measure her for her custom breast prosthetic. And we're laughing and we're smiling, we're having the best time as Beyonce plays in the background. She gets up to leave and I give her a hug and as she walks out the door, I realize now that my mission in life is truly complete and that women don't have to suffer through chicken cutlets and they don't have to hide their breasts in a drawer. Thank you.